Greetings, everybody. This is a short article from Sacred Truth Ministries. Man, uh, his name is Robert. I uh, in his this description box below is his address. If you can, maybe send him a few bucks to help. Uh, he's been in full-time ministry for like 30 years. Uh, so let's take a look. I found his work to be very very good all right let's 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 go scripture tells us that in James 4 4 that friendship with the world is enmity with God what's enmity extreme hatred so friendship with the world is enmity with God and whosoever would be a friend of the world is the enemy of God Christ said in Matthew 12 and verse 30, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth, gathereth, he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So if you're not gathering with Christ, you're scattering. Uh, thus, if a person out of ignorance joins with the world's agenda, foolishly thinking that it is Christ's agenda when it is not, that person works against Christ, working to undo his or Christ's work. That is an enemy. It matters not whether it is due to malice or ignorance. The results are the same. If you mistakenly add rat poison to the lemonade at a family reunion, your good intentions in thinking that it was sugar are meaningless in light of the fact that you have just killed your whole family. Furthermore, God has commanded us to study His Word and know His will. And that can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15. It says, Study, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, so uh, all right, so it says, Furthermore, God has commanded us to study his word and know his will. Do you know God's will? That's my, well, that's my thing. So, all right, let's continue. Yet most Christians on the day of judgment will look pretty foolish when they attempt to explain to God that they did not have time to read the Bible, which is so hard to understand. Uh, Bob's note here. They should have read James 1 where it says, if any of you lack understanding, let him ask of God. Yeah, ask God in prayer. All right, so. Uh, on the day of judgment, Christians will look pretty foolish when they attempt to explain to God that they did not have time to read the Bible, which is so hard to understand, because they were too busy going to movies and ball games and watching TV. You see, people make time for what is important to them. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And likewise, there will be your reward also. You reap what you sow. But the nitty gritty of God's word is actually so very easy to understand what part of throughout all your generations forever is confusing? The child's game, Simon says, is so very simple once you understand the rules. So it is with the Bible. God says, and he does not change his mind. God is immutable. He is holy. He is perfect. His holiness cannot change. God commanded be holy as I am holy. And therefore, that standard of holiness for his people cannot change. God did not abolish his law. That is the first leg that was kicked out from under Christianity, its foundational support. Christ said on these two laws, love for God and love for your kinsmen, hang, are supported or upheld all the law. If we truly love God and if we truly love our kinsmen, 
we will not violate any of God's law, which violations are sins first and foremost against God, by, and by which, secondarily, we wrong our kinsmen made in God's image. But before one can keep God's law, one has to actually know it. Now, people, uh, this is my notes, or my ideas. Uh, the blood sacrifice laws that were for the Levite priests, they weren't done away. They were paid in full by Christ's blood sacrifice on the cross. They weren't done away with. They were paid in full. I mean, let's face it. If somebody has a car, a used car, and you say, you know what? I'm going to buy it from you. How much do you want? Oh, I want 2000 Okay, fine. Once you've paid the $2,000, you've fulfilled the law. You've It's paid in full. Doesn't mean it was done away with. I mean, you know, bill of sale. It wasn't done away with. It was just, it was fulfilled. You fulfilled your contractual obligation. And that's what Christ did about the laws of blood sacrifice. You know, there are dietary laws that if you violate them, you can get sick. There are agricultural laws. Do you know that every seven years, uh, they were to let the land sit, not plant crops, or if crops did grow, uh, they would just plow them under. This gave the land time to rejuvenate itself. You know, the earthworms would do their little thing in the soil and aerate it. And, and uh, yeah, you know, especially if you planted like soybeans, which are a nitrogen-fixing crop, it takes nitrogen from the air and puts it in the soil, which is one of the three main things needed by plants to grow. And you plow it under and the soil would be full of nitrogen for next year's crop. God said in the sixth year, he would give you a double bumper crop so that you would have enough to get by on the, oh, well, the Sabbath year for the land. And very, very, very few people follow this. But those that have, I've heard that God keeps his promises. So, you know, and we are to love our kinsmen, our neighbors. You know, we're not, we're supposed to be a separate, separated and segregated people. We're not supposed to, uh, you know, the whole world, no way. We are not supposed to uh, live next door to a bunch of Satanists and heathen, satanic heathen aliens. No. Now, for those of you that don't know it, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Now, if you don't know it, Belial is just another satanic false god. And we read, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. See, we're supposed to be a separated people but we're not. God's judgment is upon the land for disobedience. Do you know, uh, what was it, about 73 abortion was legal? And there's been averaging about three to four million abortions every year since then. 
So it's probably, there's probably been a hundred million abortions in this country. Satanism is rampant. The public schools teach it. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, and you got kids in school, guess what? Were your kids assigned to read Harry Potter? A lot of people, a lot of them are. But guess what? The Bible's not allowed. Um, I remember the Denver Public Library. They got sued because they had the Bible in the library. Well, guess what? It was removed. But when I was doing research there, guess what Bible I found there? Not the Holy Bible. Not the Bible New and Old Testament. No, no, no. But there was a Bible there. The Church of Satan had the Satanic Bible there. You see, they only took out the Christian Bible. They didn't take out the Satanic Bible. You know, and you know what? God does not like tolerance. He doesn't want us to tolerate evil. And that's what, that's what America's been doing. That's what Christians are doing. They tolerate evil. You know, God gave us a solution of what to do with sodomites. And the King James Bible is the one that has the harshest language against it. Why do you think they hate the King James Bible? Why do you th think that they say, oh, well, there's no difference between the King James and the NIV? They know there's a difference. One says, well, one has the solution to sodomites, and the other one, well, it tells you don't be a temple prostitute. Uh, what is a temple prostitute? Is it okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the temple? Or is it okay to do it at the temple as long as you don't be a prostitute and get paid? What is a temple prostitute? Is that a male? Is that a female? I mean, you know, King James says sodomite. I think everybody knows what a sodomite is. And oh, by the way, uh, in the original NIV, you would have been hard-pressed. You could not find two verses against sodomy. Why? Because they had a lesbian and a sodomite on the board. Uh, I wouldn't say translation committee, but they were the ones that chose the words in English because they didn't translate really much of anything. They just changed a bunch of words around. So, yeah. And, of course, the NIV is owned by, uh, the publishing rights are owned by the company that prints the Satanic Bible. Oh, yeah. Of the Church of Satan. And they print gay porn. <laughs> so, you know, and they'll tell you, churches that use the NIV, especially the gay-friendly ones, so-called in San Francisco, they'll tell you in a heartbeat. Oh, well, you know, God God made them that way. It's, you know, it's God's fault. If if it's a sin, it's God's fault because he made us that way, they'll say. They will say. Let me tell you something, people. Sin is sin. God hates sin. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God's going to show the church, his true church, not this garbage passing itself off on Sundays in a big building full of thousands of people. That's not the church. No. He's going to show his true believers what tolerating evil, uh, <laughs> what happens when you tolerate evil. Yeah, because once the evil spreads like a rabid dog it's going to turn around and bite you in the rear end oh yeah so those were my thoughts so all right um all blessings praise glory and honor to the lamb of god that's jesus who is the christ in his precious name amen this is chaplain bob signing off